now let's look at some examples of some sequences and see if we can find the limits. So the first one here, we have a sub n equals 2n minus 1 over n. We want to know if the limit converges or diverges, and if it converges, we want to find the limit. So what we're going to do, what we're essentially looking for, is the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. We want to know if that exists. And what we'll do here, instead of writing a sub n in here, I should write 2n minus 1 over n. So I'm going to replace this here with that. Now we did some limits just like this really early in the school year, back in August and September. You guys remember these? There was a, a shortcut that essentially says if the power on top or the degree on top is the same as the degree on the bottom, then we can do what? Divide the leading coefficients. Um, the trick is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the steps here. The trick is if I divide every term here by n, then what I get is 2 minus 1 over n all over 1. And what happens with this term as n goes to infinity is that this term does what? Gets closer and closer to 0. So this is going to equal 2 over 1, which is 2. So when we try to answer the question whether it converges or diverges, the first thing we want to do is just try to find the limit. And if we can find the limit, then it converges. So the way we would say this is the limit or the sequence converges to 2. Okay? How about this one? So again, we want to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is 2 plus 2n. And those parentheses there are important. Because if you leave those off, then you're just finding the limit as n approaches infinity of 2, and then adding 2 onto that, 2n onto that. Um, so what happens here if we plug in a really big number? You get a really big number. What happens if you plug in a really bigger number? You get an even bigger number, right? So does this limit converge? No, because the bigger number we plug in, the bigger number we get out. So this is a divergent sequence. So we would say that this sequence diverges. That's easy enough, right? Again, this is the same kind of thing that we did early in the school year with functions. It's just now we have limits. I'm sorry, now we have sequences. I don't know why I keep saying limits instead of sequences. How about this one? There's a, a few things we could do here. Um, if we tried to take this limit, the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n times n minus 1 over n, let's just look at what's happening here. This part right here is going to converge. I think that's somewhat obvious. What's that going to converge to? That's going to converge to 1. So our rules say that if we take the limit of this times the limit of this. We can do it separately and we get an answer. Well, the problem is, as n gets really big here, what's this doing? It's going back and forth from negative 1 to 1, right? So our sequence is going to start at, well, it's going to start with a negative number, and then it's going to be positive, and then it's going to be negative, and then it's going to be positive. And we're dealing with numbers that aren't getting close to 0. So is this limit going to converge? No, this one is also going to diverge. And it's going to diverge because it oscillates back and forth between numbers that are close to 1 and close to negative 1. Okay, they're not exactly equal to it, but they're going to be close to it. To find the limit for this sequence, we're going to have to use some properties of cosine here. So what we're trying to find is the limit as n approaches infinity of the cosine of n over n. And over to the side here, I'm going to put some information we know about cosine. Uh, mostly that we know that the cosine of n is always going to be between negative 1 and 1, which means that 
the cosine of n over n is going to be somewhere between negative 1 over n and positive 1 over n. And it can be equal, but it, it is going to stay between. It's never going to stray outside of that. Um, we also know that the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 over n is going to equal 0 because we're taking negative 1 and dividing by a really, really, really big number that's going to give us 0. And the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n is going to go to 0 for the same reason. So we know that the limit of this sequence is 0, we know the limit of this sequence is 0, and since the cosine of n over n is always between them, we know that it is going to converge to 0 also. I changed this problem here a little bit for the purposes of using one of our theorems. So what we have here is an alternating sequence. Um, every other term is going to be positive and negative. So the first term will be negative, second term positive, third term negative, and so on. And that's because of this negative 1 to the n term here. So what we want to look at is the limit as n approaches infinity of that whole thing. Negative 1 to the n times 3n minus 1 over 2n squared. Now, even though this sequence is alternating between positives and negatives, we can see here that the terms are getting close to zero. So just looking at this part of the sequence, the limit uh, of 3n, over, 3n minus 1 over 2n squared is going to go to zero because the degree on the top is smaller than the degree on the bottom. And so what's going to happen here, if we want to look at a picture of what's going on, the numbers are getting close to zero but they're alternating so I don't know exactly what it's going to look like but these numbers are going to get closer and closer to zero above and below the x-axis and this actually fits in really well with our definition of the limit and we also have a theorem it's called the absolute value theorem that says that if the absolute value of the sequence converges to zero then the limit also converges to zero so if we take the absolute value of this sequence here, um, sorry, if we were to take the absolute value of this here, it essentially turns into the limit as n approaches infinity of 3n minus 1 over 2n squared, and this negative 1 to the n just disappears because the absolute value of that is 1. Well, this theorem only works if this limit goes to 0, which it does, because again the degree on top is smaller than the degree on the bottom, and so since the absolute series converges to 0, then that means that the series itself is going to converge to zero also.